Tony, it's been a little while since we've caught up with you up here at your house, a little catch up on all things club matters, but the headline of which I understand is Rob Scott, who's taken up a new role of director of football. Give us a bit of a, a backstory as to why you felt now is the time for that to happen. I think Rob's been with us now, is it three, four years? I think he proved with Paul Warren and his team that he worked well. His job definition, which is the same as it is today, is to seek out and find out what the manager wants. Um, and in that role, it's shown that through people working with Rob, recruiters, that uh, they've brought some good players in. The reason why I made him director of football is that there were further responsibilities I wanted him to take on board. The everyday responsibilities that sometimes the manager gets pulled down with, you know, like certain hotels, uh, quality of the ground, training ground, what needs to be done. So he's actually doing a caretaking job and freeing up the manager to focus in on what it's about, which is football. And by making me a director, it's given him more responsibilities. It's still not moved from the 90, 95% of his time recruitment, because recruitment for me is very important. And over the what, coming up to 16 years now, I've been in, in charge. Um, you can have the best manager in the world, but if recruitment's not right, all you're doing is making it difficult for the manager to perform. We've witnessed that, we've seen that. The financial part of recruitment is a very important thing. Rotherham has a budget. It's had £2 million more than last season. And what I want is to make sure that we are frugal in our way that we go to, to, to the business of buying players. It's no more than people in Rotherham that go out and buy, whether it's at a supermarket, whether they're buying a car, going on holiday. They want best value for money. I emphasise best value for money. Rob is proved tried tested. Also employs recruitment guys that go out, all the geographical areas of the UK and Europe. And what I did want to do, and I, I learnt it from Matt, the last manager, that Matt wanted lots of things changing, altering or whatever. And I could see it was taking a lot of his time. And I felt that that should be managed by someone else. Because, as I said, for me, a manager's role is to focus on the well-being of the players so that when they on match day can hit top performance. <clears throat> That's always been the measure. So I know that uh, we've had many meetings with Rob and I do see that as it, time does elapse, that certain managers will leave and we need a foundation to know what's behind and what's the thoughts behind recruitment. As I say, it's a very important thing. It's the vehicle and it's the main vehicle for Rodham United to perform. And we know that fans will look and see at recruitment and see who comes in, who goes out. They're very critical, so am I. As I said, I like value for money. I don't get players in to sell them. I get players in to make sure that on match day, the plane are performing to the level and the way that Rodham likes to play. As an owner, you're always very hands-on. You're on the phone to people around the club day in, day out. As a board, you meet regularly. To have Rob and his kind of football background bring you that expertise as well is going to be good for, for you guys to be able to get that extra set of opinions on things. Well, it's a natural thing now. You know, all major clubs now have directors of football. That's not the justification I'm putting forward. I'm saying what we need, the board, is a third eye. But what I'm in no doubt whatsoever, forget the director of football, but my job, my role, is to make the manager and his assistant as comfortable as they are, so they're focusing on one thing, and that's football. It's football, football, football. It's not about whether the grass needs cutting. It's not whether it's, they can make comments on it. But what I've done by making Rob the director of football, it's all about to do with football, but it isn't about the selection 
or turning around and saying to the manager, I don't like him. I've always given the manager the full authority with regard to his match play. So they know full well that the recruitment is all about getting for the manager the type of players he wants to play. And that was the same in Paul uh, Warren's reign and it will carry on as we move forward. Has it been handy for you as a chairman to be able to look at Rob almost in a, a trial period for this role because when Paul Warren left he kind of stepped in to help out on the first team matters and similarly when Matt Taylor moved on he stepped in then. Has it been good to see how he can act in that environment and conduct himself? Um, no, I, I think he always took responsibility for that role because when we spoke to Rob I don't know, three or four years ago um, it, it was an important role as I said it, it, it's, it's where the money, the investment, goes into Rotherham United. And so you want, you know, a good vehicle. And that good vehicle has got to be on the shoulders of the type of DNA <coughs> that we have in, in, in Rotherham United. And it, it, it just really makes it that I have a third view of recruitment. And I, I think it's, as I said, it, it's more... More now, I think there's more clubs that have directors of football. Um, and I think Rob being an ex-footballer, Rob having connections with football, he's also been associated with other clubs in the South. <clears throat> he's worked with other clubs. I just feel that going forward, it's going to help Rotherham United in what we do and expect in the future. And you can tell by how passionately you're speaking here and now that Rob coming in to do this director of football role doesn't diminish from what you do day to day because, as I say, you're talking as passionately as you did the day you walked in. Well, it's the biggest investment I make in my life in Rodham United. Uh, would I do it again? Yes, I would. And the say life is a learning curve. And, you know... I, I feel that Rodham United will have an opportunity at some point. I've always been impatient. I've always been passionate. And to be passionate, you have to feed passion. And you don't feed passion with losing games. I've said it before that I'm always upset when we lose. But I'm devastated when we lose if we're not playing to the way... I think we should play. I've never ever moved away from football <coughs> is entertainment. And if I'm not entertained, I'm not happy with football. A lot of people say entertainment helps if you win every game. But I'm the man. I want to win every game. And I want to be entertained every game. But things happen in life and we're still on this conveyor belt. Nobody's stopped this conveyor belt. It's moving forward. You know, whether we go down, up, up, whatever. I'm still on the conveyor belt moving and it's in one direction. And it's not down, it's that way. It might stutter, it might stir. And Rodham's seen that under my reign. But we have gone up when we've gone down. And the reason why the extra funding went in this season is that I felt we had to be more competitive. And I've always said, once I get that confidence in championship, more investment will go in, but you have to feel it. It has to be shown. And, you know, this season, we're very disappointed, given the fact that it's had its extra money and we've had to change the manager. But, yeah, my passion, my drive, my commitment is there. Do I want to sell it? No. Do I take some stick? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I have no problem. I've been in business 50 years. You know, I remember one guy saying, uh, oh, Tony Stewart's doing well 50 years ago. And somebody once said, oh, I've seen him rise and I've seen him fall. So, you know, let him throw the stick. It doesn't worry me. And, 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 and that journey, I'm on the bus. I'm, I'm not driving the bus, but I'm on the back seat of the bus. We've got navigation now. We've learnt a lot in this time and, and we'll go on. I'm blinking in one thing, and that's to get success. That's the only blink reach I've got, yeah? And that's the thing, isn't it? We're talking about success. Rotherham United have enjoyed some great success. Seven, 
seasons in the championship in recent history and they're enjoying one at the minute. So as you say, yeah, but that's the old book. I like, I like, I like the new book that's coming out. I've not written it yet, but there's a new book coming out. It's talked on the way to success, on the way to success. And uh, yeah, I never look back. I look forward, you know, uh, when we have to look forward. And there's a lot to look forward to. What was that? 16 years on, still got the stadium. We're still at this moment in championship. We've changed manager again. And I'm sure we'll get into that as we talk through the conversation. And that's it. There's things that are bubbling away all the time, aren't they, in the background? Because you don't want to stand still. There's obviously the option at, at some point in the future that the stadium might be expanded. You've got always looking at the training ground and different things like that. These aren't things that are totally at a stop, are they? These are conversations that are happening year round all the time. You know, there's things that we think will be happening with guests and crimes, yeah? For 10 years now, I've worked and worked, but it looks like now things, things are going to happen in that direction. Football for me, it's about success. I've never worked for money, I've worked for success. When I've got success, I've got the money. That's why I've never had money out of football, because we're still waiting for that success. Do I want a payday? Well, if the payday is premiership, yeah, that's something to look forward to. But yeah, pipe dreams, pipe dreams, but you know, we've seen other people do it. But at the moment, we've changed the manager, heads are down, it's a new start for Liam. I've had meetings with Liam, and uh, he's a straight level, hard working Yorkshire lad. Um, it's a good understanding. It's early days, but we've set off, I think, different to where we were a few weeks ago. And we've still got to do what we need to do. We've 19 games to go. And yeah, I'll probably be at every match. And uh, I want to win every match. That's it. As the Rotherham chairman, as Rotherham fans, nobody wants to hear that the club have given up hope on this season. And that's absolutely not the case, is it? There's very much, as you say, 19 games left to go. A manager who's come in and had a decent impact for you as well. It, yes. Uh, and, you know, if we look, look back at uh, when we advertised for the manager, I mean, that was, again, some of the big names, big names that came in. You know, I mean, I think it was mentioned that I went on holiday when, you know, with, I went on business actually, uh, and I knew that at that time that there were two individuals that wanted the job, but because of circumstances, we, there was a delay, and that delay was five days. Um, that was the gap, about five days. Uh, but no, we, we, we've got Liam. Um, I've had many managers. So I'm always careful when I talk about the manager that's here now. I remember talking about Matt, intelligent, bright. He is intelligent, bright. But I remember saying to Matt, Matt, I think it could be Alex Ferguson in six years' time, but I really, Alex Ferguson now. Hence the reason why we departed, because as an old friend of mine once said, stats don't lie. And what we need what we needed to do was to do something and uh, Liam's come in we know about his history interviewed extremely well we went for him the guy and uh, I think he's going to make a difference he's, he's a he's a manager and having had I don't know 10 12 managers he's down to earth he knows what he needs to do I'll totally support him as I have every other manager. We've got a good rapport, early days. The talking's good. I've seen what I've seen from his arrival and it seems more organised. Um, and I'm hoping that we get what we deserve from a good manager. You mentioned that you took your time and there were some excellent candidates, but perhaps some people's timelines in terms of those potential managers didn't match up with Rotherham United. One big thing going in Liam's favour, I suppose, was that he really, really wanted a job and you want somebody like that in post. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is like recruitment of uh, players. It's the same with a manager. You know, you want longevity. I don't, I don't employ people for, you know, people that's 
working at AST, they've been with me 30, 40 years. Recruitment, we don't have it. We tend to retain people. Even salesmen that's left AST have come back. So, but the dynamism of football, the day-to-day -day football, you know, you score one goal. It's nil and it's a bad game. And we scored a goal, all of a sudden it's not a bad game. But it was a bad game, but we got a result. So, yeah, I, I got all the sort of uh, pain and suffering that fans do. Um, I'm a different uh, fan. I share the same pain, suffering. But my job is to not just wallow in the suffering and the pain. It's to pick up the cudgel. And again, as I said, against all adversity, we've got to do something about it. And it's not just a wing and a prayer. It's action. And the action was to get a new manager. Now we've got recruitment going in. But he'll do what he needs to do. He's got my backing to do that. And uh, we'll do what we can for the rest of the season. I was going to come on to the fact that it's January. The reason that this announcement for Rob Scott's new position has perhaps been delayed a little bit is because you've not wanted to detract from him getting stuck into the recruitment side of things. Yeah. But now the transfer window is open. You've already alluded to it there that you're going to back Liam Richardson in, in whichever way you can. Yeah. I, I mean, a lot's been talked about Rob. There's not, it wasn't a big, immense type of decision to get Rob Scott into that. He was doing it. It was natural. Good with people. Well, well respected with other clubs. Very important. You know, he could talk to Man City. Man, people like Rob Scott. That's a big thing. Is he known in football? Is he, is, is he the Heineken? Can he get to parts? Yes, he can. So I know we talked long and hard about Rob, but Rob was a natural progression in what he was already doing. But as I said, to repeat, his main role is to get recruitment zipping to suit the manager. And as I say, that's something you'll be looking to, to try and do in January, try and strengthen. You've already broken a transfer record twice in the summer, given yep. Matt Taylor as it was back then, a real competitive budget. And whilst it will be kind of stretching things a little bit, you'll, you'll do everything you can to keep rather in this division. Yeah, 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 they're happy. You know, we, we talked when we interviewed about the budget, the manager, they're, they're happy with the budget. So, yeah, um, I, I'm looking forward because uh, we've seen a change in the football. There's no doubt, Sam. We've seen a change in the football. They seem more organised. Um, yeah, we, what, what, what are we lacking? Confidence, Sam. I think we're just lacking that bit of confidence. We've shown now that we're not going to... We haven't been um, goals to flowing as, as they did. Um, you know, to, to, to see the Wednesday job, the, the Watford job, uh, that broke my heart. That, you know, that's not us. That is not Rodney United. That, I won't tolerate that sort of performance. Uh, but no, we, we, we seem more organised. I think what we're lacking now is a bit of confidence, but that's what they have to do. I like the assistant manager as well, Rob. Um, he came over quite well. Uh, which was interesting. When we had the meetings, Rob was there. I liked that. So, yeah, so the fit is nice. It's comfortable. It, we know what it's about. And, uh, yeah, I'd like to see the performance and the confidence start to build with 19 games to go. And as difficult as the situation is at this moment in time, do you still have a lot of excitement around this? As I say, you've restructured the model off the pitch. You've got yourself a new head coach on it. He's got his own staff. For Tony Stewart, is it still a very exciting time to be the Rotherham United chairman? It is, because I've, I've, I look forward to a future. And it's the future what you make it, how you want it to be. You know, I've never been one to sort of hide and think everything's going to happen. You have to make it happen. You display that by recruiting, you display that by a manager, you display that by investing more money into the... Um, but, you know, I see more than probably the fans, I see the other clubs. You know, you look at all clubs now that are being taken over. And if it were about money, I could have sold up weeks, months ago. 
But no, I, I still want to achieve something that I've set out to achieve. And for doubters, I'm trying to prove them wrong. Because for me, it's, it's my sole mission to become six, more successful in football. That's why I'm sticking at it, because I've not done the job I've set out to do. Rob, we've just had confirmation from the chairman on your new role as director of football. Congratulations, first and foremost. First question, I suppose, we've had great success over the last 10 years or so in, with the model as it's been. Why do you feel like it's now that the time's needed for a director of football role at this club? I think whilst you say, what do I feel? I think it's collective um, in terms of the football club. Um, obviously, we had Warney for six years and uh, you know things went along fairly smoothly, um, albeit there were probably things that we we could have addressed earlier to, to try and improve or try and evolve from. But I think obviously results kept that ticking along as it, as it was. Um, and then obviously when Warney left and, and Matt Taylor came in, um, I think we've, we've obviously had a review of the reasons why we relinquished, relinquished him from his role. Um, and it just goes deeper than the, than the actual match day, training day scenarios around the football club. And, uh, you know, what we need to, what we needed to identify to can continue being as, success, as successful as we can be, really. It's the type of club where everybody chips in anyway, but what people perhaps won't have seen is you've done a lot of the bits and pieces this will entail behind the scenes already. Tell us a bit about how the chairman and the board have outlined this position to you. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Everybody does chip in here and probably goes above and beyond in, in terms of helping out with other people and other departments and et cetera, et cetera, to, con to create a, a good working environment. So that is true. Um, I think particularly, you know, harping on about it, but going back to when Warney left because he was such a, a, a figure head around the club and kind of managed most of the things. When he left, there were a lot of things that, that did fall between cracks in terms of, of job responsibilities. So a lot of that I did, I did pick up and, and, and go with to try and help things run as smoothly as possible. So I think, we, you know, as a club and the board, as you say, they looked at everything and, you know, my role, primarily has always been the recruitment side of things and you know that will remain in place as in terms of the recruitment I think you look at any director of football or sporting director or however they want to title it at any other club they oversee the departments um you know and they, they sort of helicopter role in terms of looking at all the departments to make sure that, that things are running smoothly and jobs are being carried out uh, as, as practically and as well as they can be and you know I can that's that's what I'll do so it, it's overseeing the this, this smooth running of the football club from, you know, looking at how we can develop things going forward in terms of the academy, in terms of the first team, in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of staffing. Um, in terms of the football side of things, you know, obviously I still have a, an, a, a big role to play in the recruitment and that won't diminish at all. But, um, you know, when it comes to picking the team and the coaching and um, dealing with the players on a day-to-day -day basis, that's 100% that's obviously down to Liam. And that's not something that I've interested in getting involved in at all and it's not I don't want to tread on toes I've never have done through when even Warney and, and Matt were here that was nothing that's something that wasn't my remit so but everything I can do to help take away job and, and responsibility outside of football and three points on a Saturday and a Tuesday um, is, is my remit really is to try and help with. It's perhaps a, a big part of that then as well being the vehicle between the likes of Liam Richardson on the coaching staff that the club staff and academy staff, people like that, trying to be the voice to, to take these things back to board level. Yeah, obviously there's there's, there's always continued um, bits and pieces being asked for or queried or there's a, if there's an issue or, you know, what we have to understand is that, that problems can manifest the longer they are left, obviously. And, you know, we just felt that there was a, probably a little bit more of a club um, person at the training ground. I want to say club person, I mean more of an administrative side rather than a football side. Um, you know, so if there are staffing issues, you know, if there are infrastructure issues, if there's anything of that nature, really we don't want those problems ending up at Liam's door on a Friday morning before a game on a Saturday, you know, albeit on a Monday afternoon or, you know, we, we, I, that's something I will pick up and run with. Listen, obviously Liam will have a part to play in it, his opinion will be listened to and his, his advice will be taken in terms of, of the staffing and things like that. But primarily, you know, it's a club. If, if it's to be run as a business, 
you know that's that's how it would be done in any any business so you know we're taking on that role and probably coming into line with with a lot of clubs now at this level and and below and certainly above us we've just spoken to tony who has always been and continues to be a very hands-on chairman but it's almost impossible, isn't it, for him to be across all the tasks and all the things going on at the club. And I imagine you'll kind of be an intermi intermediary. Real, isn't it? Really, really. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I, I just sort of said there, I mean, I was lucky enough, probably in hindsight now, but not at the time, to come out of football. Uh, you know, when I finished playing and went into a corporate business environment. And, you know, one lesson that I learned very early on is when I went to the, to the MD to ask him how something was done. And he was like, I don't know. That's why I get so-and-so in to do it. You know, he oversaw it and wanted to know what was happening and have a finger on the pulse and be kept in the loop. But physically, you cannot do everything. You, you, you're just impossible in any business because if you do, you end up spreading yourself so thin that that things get left to want really. So obviously, my role is to try and tie everything together. And it's not I'm not here as a 100% decision maker. That's not what it is. My my job is to be the conduit between the training ground. And the hierarchy in terms of the board, um, you know, to relay any issues, to relay any good news or whatever it might be, is is to be that that go between between the two and and try and help things run a bit smoother. Moving on slightly, the Rotherham United DNA in inverted commas has always been something that's been vitally important to everybody here at the club. You'll know that through your recruitment role as well. But in terms of your new job title, is a lot of that going to be about? establishing a real continuation that no matter who the head coach is or no matter who's at the football club yeah 100 percent. i think that that that's it's difficult to sit here and, and say something about previous managers without sounding like you, you're giving them a hard time but you know that we have to review and in, in any job in any walk of life if you don't review the good and the bad you, you just don't know how you've either got there and how or how you can um, not make the same mistakes going forwards and i think that's what we got to look at you know we employed a manager last time in, in, in Matt and he came in and, you know, whilst he achieved what we wanted of him last year, which was to stay in the league, I think possibly then we started to divert away from a lot of the things that were rather United. Um, I think fans will testify to that, that sometimes the performances on the pitch were probably gone away from what they expect. Um, you know, I've been associated with the club now since 1998 on and off. Um, this role is nearly five years as a player it was around eight just over eight years so got and I don't think that nothing's changed too much in terms of the town is expects a certain level of performance when the players go out on the pitch and that obviously leads back to the recruitment the type of players that we recruit and albeit yes we want to stick to that Rotherham DNA that that runs through the club runs through the fans and is a demand from everybody that within the club from the players is we expect this as a minimum um, whilst we also need to improve you know and there will be a period of of adjustment while well, I think you see with Liam's team I think already you can see that we've, we've started to become more organized we start to become more physical again and we start to be a lot more disciplined yes we want to go and win games of football um, but it, it, it'll take a period of time of stabilization of getting an idea of how the players are playing um, and if we can build on that, then, you know, I think we'll be in a good place going forwards. You only got to look back to when Liam was at Wigan and we played them here and away from home in, in the League One season when we were promoted behind them. And they were by far the best team in the league, physically, athletically, um, but also their style of play was good. You know, there wasn't, yes, he wanted to play and keep the keep possession, but also he was very physical and getting the ball forward and getting the ball in the box. So... If we can emulate that, then, you know, we'll, we'll keep moving forwards. You already alluded to it there, but Liam was recruited partly because his kind of vision and style aligns very closely with what we see as the Rotherham United DNA, as you've alluded to. We've got it in documents around the club, but just as a reminder to fans, what, what do you consider the Rotherham United DNA to be as, as a broad rule? Oh, well, it, it, there's, there's many, many elements, but I think it was, it was, I sat down with Liam when he first came in and discussed recruitment. Um, discuss the types of players that he wanted and it enthused me the fact that he's got which can seem a very simple concept but in theory you can drill down into that and look at other aspects but essentially the three elements is can you run can you play and can you fight and obviously within that that's very general but it doesn't get too far away from that within our DNA you know all the players here 
have to be able to run. And when they say run, I mean work hard, press, and that comes into the fight element of it. There's different levels of play. Some players, you know, are, are better on the ball, like players that we've had in the past. Dan Barlasser, for example, I think we made Dan a better player because we made him want to run around a bit more and wanted to fight a little bit more and add that to his play. So, you know, that, that was an element that Liam wanted to bring. His understanding without knowing the intricacies of the football club was aligned very well with what we're looking for, which is the continuity, you know, the type of players. You know, no club can sustain a new manager coming in every two years or a new head coach coming in every two years and clearing out a playing staff and saying, well, I don't want to like that style, I want to play this style. You know, this sort of goes back to my point of whilst we keep the DNA and, and the fabric that runs through the club, we also have to try and keep evolving and modifying that as we go along without losing the, the, the internal elements that are really, really important to the football club and the fans. Some fans may be slightly worried that your new role is going to detract from perhaps the recruitment side of things. But as you've already alluded to in this interview, you've mentioned that this is going to be a case of overseeing everything. What would you say to them to kind of reassure them that that's not going to drop off? No, it's, it's not going to drop off. Like, you know, there's periods of the year where recruitment is obviously comes to the fore and that's obviously now with the transfer windows. So, you know, I've got a, a staff that are, are, have been with me now for a, a period of years, which they understand the club, you know, they, they, they also understand what we are. Um, I can trust them, I can rely on them. Um, and we're working very, very hard at this period of time, which is a slow window to get players in. Um, that won't change. Um, you know, this prior, you have to prioritise in anything, in any walk of life, whether it's at home or whether it's at work, and the most important things. And yes, it's going to be busy, but um, I'd like to think, you know, we get to a point where the main issues are, are, are rectified and, and adjusted and overseen. And that's the biggest thing for me is trying to oversee everything so they don't manifest into big problems. You know, they're, they're, they're sorted out at source or they're they're talked about at very early stages before they do manifest into something bigger and that's that's what we've got to do we can't we need to be proactive rather than reactive on the, on certain issues the recruitment side of things has given you an extensive network of contacts both on the playing side and off the playing side but do you think that means that the two worlds will kind of dovetail quite nicely that you know so many people in football yeah well the world's changed in football in terms of the last few years and you know when you used to speak to other coaches or managers. I now speak to other directors of football or sporting directors. So you're kind of on the same page as them anyway. Um, so yeah, it, the contacts are there anyway that they've been cultivated over the last few years and before that when I was at other clubs. So the contacts don't change too much. Um, they might move from club to club, but you still have that that name in your, in your phone book. Um, you know, but that's a lot of things. It's it, the role is about developing those relationships. You know, particularly with with Premier League clubs and bigger Championship clubs, where you know I have to get out there and meet them and, and go and understand how they want to have loan players and what style of play they want. So, you know, that makes life easier for us down the line that we can create relationships with other clubs that we can utilise. The club's got strategies in place, long term, short term, for various different projects, but. Your new position, I imagine, will involve trying to add some real colour to those and, and give them a real direction moving forwards. Yeah, well, there's obviously always short-term goals, and that's that. In terms of the recruitment, that that is always highlighted within the windows we are, and you know what what league we're looking to either go into, ide ideally stay in this league or be promoted when we have been promoted. So, you know, short-term goals. I think we need to try and get away from quick fixes as much as we possibly can. Um, we need that continuity so that we, we need to sort of evolve from the short term goals over a period of time into the medium and long term, which is certainly from recruitment, which is getting back to young, hungry players from probably lower down the pyramid or from different shores and bringing them into the football club, getting the value for the money for them on the pitch um, and, and them offering good service to us. And if that means a bigger club from the Premier League or higher in the Championship wants to come and buy them, then that's what we have to do. We're, every club in the Football League and the Premier League is a, is a selling club, every club, because somebody always wants your best players. Um, so we just have to get back to that, but we don't want to sell our best players. But we, what we want to do is, is that, that that's a bit of a... a a USP for the recruitment and the club as a, as a whole, because if players are coming here, doing well and moving on, then it's easier to attract other players and, and keep that sort of system going. So 
yeah, of course, in any in any walk of life, short, medium, long term goals. But really, we want to start looking towards the medium and long term and how we can be sustainable at a certain level, um, which is what we've been trying to do. Perhaps something that fits into the things you're talking about there is is the training ground and the academy things like that. There's things that won't change overnight no. following your appointment, but the things that I know you're going to get your teeth straight stuck into. Yeah, there's, I haven't got a magic wand, and it, and you know we all know that. The world turns on finances, everything that you do, whether you're buying a house, it, the amount of money you spend will dictate the quality and everything else that goes with it. So we have to be realistic, albeit, you know, we need to be also always trying to champion the course to, to take the next step and, and improve and keep evolving. Because if we don't, listen, I read something about Reading yesterday and they've got a six million pound training ground, but they could be weeks away from going out of business. Um, so whilst you do want the nice things and, and you, want, you want things to move forward, you, you still have to work within a, a remit and parameters of what's affordable. And everybody has a budget to work to. So whilst improvements are nice to be made, they've got to be right and they've got to be beneficial to the club over the long term and not just a quick fix. And we, 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 uh, we have to understand that. You took a bit more of a front of house role in the media following Liam Richardson's appointment. And you will remember, I'm sure, for some pretty tough questions you've never been shy of coming in front of the camera and we've asked you to is that something perhaps that this role will see you do a bit more of perhaps provide that link to the fans and what's going on at the board level yeah I, th I think so obviously you can't tell everybody everything because it's just not practical but yeah I'd like to do a more regular um, sort of feature in terms of trying to keep everybody in, in the loop in terms of what we're trying to do and how things are going um, you know Listen, we're not going to please everybody all the time, but I think that transparency between the club and the fans is good going forwards and that they feel part of it and understand that they know what's going on sometimes that they can't always see. So, yeah, I'd like to do that on, on a regular, more regular basis. Um, so hopefully that's something we can we can continue to do. Looking at the present, there's obviously a tough job on our hands to try and stay in the championship this season, but you as much as anybody, the chairman, the, the belief is still very much there that it can be done. Yeah, you have to. Um, I think, you know, I, I said how long I've been here. I remember going back to the years at Millmore playing under Ronnie Moore. I don't think we won from the start of the season right through to sort of November time. And we went and beat Leeds at home and we stayed up that season. So whilst, yes, it is going to be difficult, um, it's until it's um, an actual fact that we can't stay up, then this club is known for battling away. And that's what we'll continue to do. And, you know, I don't think that's a, uh, something that can ever be questioned about the group and the staff and, and the fans as well you know what I'd, what we'd like to see is um you know that sort of mood around the place yeah we need to win to get that back we understand that but i'm, I'm hopeful that the fans can start to see that um a bit of the old rotherham's coming back a bit of fight a bit of the spirit and a bit of the aggression to try and win games of football is returning you've had regular contact with the chairman pretty much all the time that you've been at the club now and particularly during that period when you were appointing the new head coach between the board. You spent a lot of time on the phone to him and things like that. How have you found the relationship with Tony since you've been at the club? Yeah, good. It's, it's transparent. You know, there's no grey areas. Yeah. He's obviously very, uh, uh, very vocal when he speaks to me in terms of what he wants and how he wants it to happen. Um, you know, so the, there's clarity there for, for sure. So he understands, we understand what he wants. Um, Without, without doubt. So we, you know, we, we're trying to carry out the, his requirements to the best of our abilities. And, and me in particular, yeah, that relationship's been good and there's an understanding there. I think there's a there's a trust which is always needed in any good flourishing relationship. So, you know, I, I've said to him on many occasion, I think that's been proven in the, the work that I've done behind the scenes is that I want to do the best for the football club. Always have, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't always work out the way you want it to, but there's outside influences that can dictate that. But as, a, as I think everybody within the club that have been here for a long time and work really, really hard for the football club all want the best for the football club and that, that won't ever waver. You've seen his elation after wins, disappointment after defeats. You've spoken to him many times. And I suppose the question is, you wouldn't be appointing somebody like yourself if his passion didn't still burn as brightly as the day took over. Exactly that. He's a successful businessman in his own right. And um, failure isn't on his agenda so he's always wanting to achieve he always wants to keep pushing forward um, you know regardless of setbacks regardless of of successes you have to keep pushing forward I think we said that about evolving if as soon as you stop doing that you start going backwards and uh, 
what we don't want to do is uh, is start rolling back down the hill. So he's very passionate about what he wants to do and where the club where he wants it to be. And uh, I'll, I'll try my very best to try and help with those processes. And finally, for yourself, as somebody that always wants to better themselves in, in the industry, you must be pretty excited about the project here because there is a lot that you can get your teeth stuck into and it's something that I'm sure you, you're willing to get cracking on with. 100%. Look, I'm really, first point on that question is that it's really, I'm really honoured to be able to offer the role. Um, you know, as I said, I've been around the club a long time in various guises, but, you know, to be given a, a, a position like this is a, is a, a really, really great job for me you know and I can't wait to get going with lots of things and try and improve things as we go try and stabilize a few other things um, but as I said it's about trying to keep the club on, on a path that we've we've always known whilst trying to improve elements of it as we go forwards.